Edith doesn't do it, the Dowager gets sick, and an unwelcome guest returns. We'll discuss all that and more on this week's Up with Downton. I'm Chase, and I'm here with Ashley, Tanya, and we're here to recap episode six. Ooh. It's getting close. It is getting close. Heating up. Uh, First impressions, (laughs) Sash, what'd you think this episode? I I thought it was another fun episode, except for the little scare of everybody's favorite, the Dowager, her little medical scare. But um, it was fun watching Mary let loose and get dirty. Fancy free. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, um, I I panicked for half a second when I saw the Dowager coughing, but I I remember... uh, reading an article where Julian Fellow said he would never kill her off the right. show as long as she wanted to do it. She was secure. And I, I don't think the show could survive without her. I don't frankly. think so either. I absolutely not. I mean, well, yeah, no way. He can't do that. You know, I she's still w- sprightly. She's still a young, young lady. They put a bunch of mi- makeup on her. <laughs> yeah. Even She's when she around. was six, she was still a little spicy. Yeah. One of my favorite parts during that uh, that whole interchange between her and Isabel when she's sick is when she's like out of it and she's like, the food is awful. And Isabel's like, she doesn't know what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she probably was being she's serious. Like, this food is awful. <laughs> it oh, was funny. That was good. Um, so do you guys know any good pig men? That's, that was one of the questions asked during this episode. Do you know a good pig man? I love the storyline with the pigs. It's just, it's awesome. They're having yeah. a, and she rolls up her sleeves and gets, gets right to it. And, and so does Charles. Yeah. I like Charles. I'm a Charles fan. Go Charles. Yeah. Kind, like of Charles a, kind of a match made there at the pig meal. Not pig meal. The pig pen. Pig pen. Yeah. I mean, it's gotta be love if she's going to go get all pig slop on her for somebody she's because she's trying to impress him obviously yes so i thought that was probably from all of the seasons my favorite with mary because she finally let loose she was laughing she was having a good time even though she's you know covered in mud and rain and and uh or water and so i just uh i thought it was Probably the best side we've seen of her. I, you know, I agree, Tanya. I don't think Mary's ever been this charming, even in the Matthew seasons. Uh, no, I don't think I've ever seen her genuinely laugh. Like, she lost it. She was laughing yes, so hard. I, I don't think we've ever seen that. And she scrambled eggs, oh, which we've never right. seen. She did. She's yeah. domestic. I know. I was like, you know, <laughs> remember when Sybil, they wanted, Sybil wanted to learn how to cook and they were like all up in arms i'm like when did mary go downstairs and scramble eggs scandalous <laughs> but did learn you how to make this eggs was such a british thing too even with scrambled eggs they used a knife and a fork yes to scrape it onto the back of the fork and i yeah. was like Just... they are so charming with their etiquette is it charming well or i'm trying snooties. to be nice. well snotty no I'm you know kidding. they were wearing you know tuxedos to the pig pen well in the that's, first true. Place, so. <laughs> that's true yeah. they were right? uh that that did make me laugh, uh, and Mary had one of the funniest lines during their breakfast scene. She said, "You saved our bacon, <laughs> literally." <laughs> <laughs> A little funny, but that was really funny. Yeah, that, that made me laugh. I thought um, it was funny too because now in modern days, bacon is like the craze, and so to have that kind of a funny thing of you saved bacon our bacon. Is, yeah, it's it's everywhere. It's it taken everywhere. over. People are like obsessed with bacon. You realize they don't remove it from the pig surgically. What? <laughs> Bombshell. <laughs> no. Know. So what else happened in this episode? Robert leaves for America. Um he leaves Rose in charge of fun. Yes. For the manor. It was an interesting decision. That was kind of funny. Um Is I, is that a real thing? You're in charge of fun. I, I, believe... I think it's because he didn't have anything, didn't know what else to say to her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Goodbye, Bye. cousin. <laughs> She's now the cruise ship director. The uh, What know. was it on the love book? Julie. Julie, Julie She's... Steubing. She's Julie of Downton Abbey. Yeah. yeah. She's bequeathed a clipboard in yeah. his yeah. will. Yeah. Thing. yeah. But, uh, he went to America because Cora's brother, Harold, who will be played by... Uh, Giamatti, Paul Giamatti Giamatti in the finale this Mm -hmm. season, uh, is involved with the Teapot Dome scandal, which is 
you know, like much on a show, real life event. Um, why don't you tell us about that? Why, you know what, Ashley? I think I will. Okay. Yeah, I happen to have a little paragraph written on my notes <laughs> about I was it. You would. Teapot Dome, you guys, is an oil reserve located in Wyoming. It was held as a Navy petroleum reserve by the U.S. government. The Secretary of Interior, Albert Fall, leased the oil at suspiciously low rates using no bid contracts to friendly oil companies. And I assume that uh, Harold, Cora's brother, is involved with one of these oil companies. Uh, the Secretary Fall was convicted of bribery. And pre Watergate, this was seen as history's greatest political scandal. Oh, that we never in, heard of until now. I hey. I hadn't heard of it. Yeah, I think I heard There's about it. There's been so many school. since then that really it's <laughs> it's all a Yeah, and this was before we just started adding gate to all the scandals. So this would have been like in teapot the gate. Of, <laughs> and and being in the middle of an oil state, I'm surprised we haven't heard of it. Right? You know, we had a big oil scandal in the 80s, the savings and loan thing. I don't know all the details, but, you know. Scandal. Okay, I think we're I digress. That, that's not, yeah, we are digressing we from are the totally episode. We are totally digressing. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> what else should we talk about? We talked about the Dowager. We talked about the, oh, another funny line before the pig incident was uh, Mary talking to Anna. She had discovered that Charles called her aloof. Right. And Mary said to Anna, you don't think I'm aloof, do you? And Anna said, I... <laughs> back to her, do you want me to answer truthfully or as a lady's, as maid. A lady's maid? So <laughs> Mary said, never like, mind. Oh, never mind. Yeah. That was funny. That was funny. Uh, back to the America thing. One of the things, um, did you notice Mrs. Pat Moore was like, I wouldn't want to go to America. It's steak and ketchup. And then she says something else, but I, I couldn't understand what she said, but steak and ketchup. And I was like, I guess that's how she perceived. She goes, I've seen the pictures. I saw that on Twitter <laughs> last night. Somebody tweeted, Mrs. Pat, according to Mrs. Patmore, America equals ketchup. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I'm fine with that description, frankly. Give me steak and ketchup. I do and have I'm relatives that eat ketchup on their steak. So I kind of understood what Mrs. Patmore was saying. Yeah. yeah. You know, and this is, I'm sorry if this is random, but I was so happy for Down last night because I had watched, uh, this new show, True Detective, and a little bit of Walking Dead uh, last night. And I was just on edge. You know, I mean, the, a little PTSD after those. I need, I needed Down Abbey to calm down and go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why every channel has just decided, let's keep America up late on Sunday nights These with our best shows. Shows are causing anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Downton's like a, a nice hot cup of tea. Chamomile yeah. tea before you go to bed. It yeah. is. Fancy Very tea. Nice. So what else happened? Oh, uh, Tanya, last week you were talking about how Rose's boyfriend is named Jack, and you were wondering if there was, were any allusions to Titanic. Right. And this week they were on a boat. <laughs> they were on a rowboat in the park. Oh. And, <laughs> See? Yeah. They, yeah. Didn't, they didn't do the, the you Standing know, sta yeah. the standard Pratt fall. No one fell in the water. Like, oh. Yeah. No, they didn't. They just kissed. No ore wars yeah. either, which... Something about pulling an oar makes, you know, you want to do like a little oar slap war. fight with the oars. Wow. A duel. <laughs> no, they and they do didn't that. do the, you They're know. They're all classy. Yeah. Anyway. They did kiss, though. Um, we can't go over that little part. Yeah. A little smooch. Yeah, they did. A little smooch in the park under the yes, bridge. Yes, they did. Uh, this is kind of a tough topic to, to discuss, but either situation, either storyline. Yeah. Um, oh, Edith. You know, we found out last week she's with child from Gregson, who is missing in um, Munich. Munich. Missing or has gone underground, we're not sure. We don't mm. know yet. I hope we see him again. Bless her heart. She I just, know. she deserves a little happiness. She does. Does she? <laughs> <laughs> I'm rooting for Edith. Um, I hope so. She, you know, she considers... You know, losing the, the baby and changes her mind at the last minute. Aunt Rosamond tags along to the doctor, and uh, I thought that was pretty compelling, that storyline. You know what I find interesting about that storyline? So, again, I, and I said a little bit about Cora last week. I'm, just, I'm interested in her character. I, don't, I haven't quite figured her out. So Mary, in the first season, literally, you know, a man dies 
in her bed and Cora helps her right. clean up the mess, you know, no questions asked. She immediately goes to her and, you know, right. here's what's up. So Edith is going through this situation that only a mother really could understand and help you with. And she confides in Rosamond and not her mother. Her mother remains completely clueless to the whole situation. Right. Well, and I just find that interesting. It is, but I think it's out of um, practicality rather than, you know, maybe Ros- Rosamond caught her kind of in flagrante, you know, the walk of shame after she and, and, and Michael were were intimate. Yeah, but she, she spills it. I mean, Cora's pressed her a couple of times, like, something's right. up with you. I'm not sure what it is, but what's going on? And she's just not going to spill it. But it just took a little prodding from Rosamond, and now it, you know, just everything. You know, she spills beans. I don't know. I, just, I find that interesting. Mothers and daughters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it's, it's really cool that we're seeing more of Aunt Rosamond, because for the first couple of seasons, she'd pop in maybe one or two episodes. Now right. she's... She's almost, you know, a main part of the cast. We see her every week, and I, I really am enjoying her her character. Um, yeah, so, I like her too. Yeah, I guess if you had an aunt like her, that'd probably be the cool <laughs> aunt in London. Cool aunt. You yeah. know, it's with like the my big house. Jane. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, so also this week we had the return of the evil Mister Green, yes. Lord Gillingham's valet. I don't like him. I don't like him. No. I don't like I don't him either. I feel. Sure I think Miss Hughes and I are on the same page. With, uh, that was a good scene. Woof. Yeah. She let him have it. She did let him have it. I, they, I mean, they wrote him back in so Bates could figure it out, right? Ding! I think so. <laughs> I mean... I think so. It's like giving I mean, a little care, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Mr. Green was so oblivious, but he just gave himself away. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and of course, Car- uh, not Carson, uh, Bates is so observant, obviously, of Anna, and then Mrs. Hughes is across from him at the table, and he's seeing their reactions. So I think he has figured it out. You think he has? I it, think it so. kind of showed him, you know, he, he's so, you know, not expressive sometimes. You really have to watch his face. But I, I, I agree with you, Tanya. I think he, he knows something's up. And I think he mm-hmm. is putting two and two together with the green I'm situation. curious to see how that's going to play out because there's going to be some kind of confrontation because Bates is not someone oh. that's just going to be like, Oh, okay. Oh, no, there's going to be I'm something. I'm glad I figured that out. It, right. Now I know. Right. <laughs> Let's move next. Here. Yeah. Um, and did, Hughes tried to warn him. I, I mean, I watched it first thinking she was threatening his life, but then I, on second thought, she is warning him to keep to the shadows and not, you know, he's very boisterous. He's, Mr. Good Time Party Guy, this screen. And I think she knows that if he doesn't tone it down, he will eventually give himself away, which he does. You know, he admits he was downstairs during the concert. Yeah, I don't so, think he's a bright fella. No, he's no. Not. no. And Bates is very bright. Yes. Okay. So. And he, he's he got <laughs> like some... Like a shining star. <laughs> yes, Definitely. So we are just almost out of time. We have a little over a minute left. We like to end the show with a fun question. And our, it's a, I was really searching this week, honestly, to find a fun thing to end with. But we know Rose was named by Robert as the director of fun for Downton Abbey in his absence. So I'm wondering what she can do at Downton to fulfill her new obligation as director of fun. Do you guys have any, any ideas? Why don't you think about that for a minute? And I'll remind our listeners that they can follow OETA on Twitter. They can like us on Facebook. We're also on YouTube, Instagram, Tumblr, and Pinterest. So, what do we think? What can Rose do to make Downton more fun while Robert's away? I don't know. The the thing that just popped in my head, you know when um, guys, well, girls too, they put a bat down and then they put the head on and they spin around? <laughs> I think I did that in have college. Like, ra- yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know why I thought of that. I just can see them all on the lawn, <laughs> like trying to race across. <laughs> I think they invented it and they used croquet mallets uh, instead of baseball bats. That's mats. exactly what I was thinking. They're, they're or cricket, cricket they're, bats. They're flat no. on this, so I don't know how well they would have spun very well. But, but anyway. Yeah. I, idea. I think they should have a good old fashioned luau with one of those pigs. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Their yeah. yeah, okay. Well, I, again, the bacon is not removed surgically. 
<laughs> Nor is the ham. Well, I just I try to get I try to get in Rose's mindset. And oh, I think yeah. that she would like to brighten up some of the old portraits, you know, with some finger painting. So finger. yeah, let's that's just probably her finger. level of skill. Yeah. Just Why don't we? <laughs> anyway, can I say my favorite line before? Yeah, we, sure. We, we kind of skipped that part this week. I know. Um, it was between Carson and Mrs. Hughes, and I'm I'm totally blanking on the the context around it. But he said, "You're such a plotter," and she says, "It's a skill that all women must have." That was one. She's of my all old women. Doesn't Did she, she say old? I old women. Oh, all. I didn't get that part. Maybe because I'm a woman, I just assumed it was all women. <laughs> We are good at that. Yes, we Let's are. Let's get to plotting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back next week with more plotting for you guys. Thanks for listening to Up With Down. I'm Chase. I'm Ashley. And I'm Tanya. Thanks, guys. We'll be back next week.